Cross-Site Scripting, also known as XSS, is type of attack where an attacker aims to execute malicious script in the victim's web browser by injecting it as a content into user-trusted website. There is no single standardized classification, but mostly they can be distinguished between two primary categories, non-persistent and persistent. Non-persistent is also known as reflected, and it is by far the most basic type of cross-site scripting. It arises when the application receives data in a HTTP request and includes the data in the response without proper verification against unexpected elements. As a data here can be attacked with remote or inline script. Passing the data through HTTP query string parameters makes it pretty common for attackers to deliver such links using email message or some other website. Typical example of it would be a search engine that allows passing a script within a search query. And then that query is displayed as a part of a page content. Additionally, URL can be encoded, which still will be understandable by browser, however not so obvious for human readers to immediately reveal presence of malicious script. The persistent XSS vulnerability is a more devastating variant of cross-site scripting. It occurs when data provided by the attacker is saved by server and permanently displayed on pages returned to the other users. As part of this message, malicious script could be injected. And it's not necessary needs to be inside the script tag. That might simply be an error handler for non-existing image source. As a result, script is executed on victim's web browser, which in turn might transmit users' private data like cookies, session, or other sensitive information to the attacker's destination. Redirect victim to the website controlled by attacker, read and modify page contents, or perform other kinds of operations like requests on behalf of the user. For banking applications, this might be even calling a money transfer API using browser stored access token or authentication cookies. It might even use features like microphone, geodata, or web camera if user has granted proper permissions to the application beforehand. It's really hard to completely eliminate the possibility of XSS attack. However, there are things which can be done in order to minimize the chance. First and most fundamental is to validate and sanitize your input text. If your text content doesn't expect to have any kind of HTML, then it shouldn't be allowed or stripped out. If HTML markup is allowed, then you need to make sure it doesn't contain any kind of scripts injected. The hard thing is that JS code can be obfuscated to something like this. And it is still a valid JS alert statement inside image on error attribute. Have you recognized it? You can check this out on gsfact.com. Another measure is cookie security. Use HTTP only flag in case when your cookies are intended to be used only in scope of HTTP requests. This allows web server to set cookies that are unavailable to client-side scripts. Still, it's not a panacea since JavaScript code can directly benefit all rights associated with HTTP-only cookie in the browser without having to steal it, just by issuing HTTP request to the target server, where cookies will be automatically attached. Additionally, same site cookie parameter can be used. When it's set to strict, cookies are stripped from all cross-origin requests. One more tool to mitigate XSS is browser security mechanism called Content Security Policy. With these policies described in HTTP response headers, developers could tell the browser which exact resources can be loaded in web application. In this example, server specifies that the page can only execute scripts coming from its own origin. 
So whenever the browser encounters scripts from another domain, they won't be loaded. Similarly, inline code blocks will not be executed as there is no way for browser to recognize their origin. This might not be acceptable for lots of the applications. To overcome that issue, CSP level 2 introduces hashes and nonces. It aims to make TSP more compatible with real-world applications without compromising security. CSP level 2 policy can contain script hash, which includes hashing algorithm and the hash itself. Whenever a browser encounters inline GS code, it calculates the hash by itself and compares with ones listed in the policies. If it finds a match, then script is executed, otherwise it will be blocked. Note that hashes are only supported for inline code blocks, not for remote files. Nonce is a second mechanism of executing legitimate JavaScript code. Script blocked is now configured with a nonce attribute. Nonce mechanism is supported by both inline script blocks and remote files. The same nonce value should match in the TSP policy configuration. When browser encounters a script with a load nonce attribute, the script is loaded and executed, otherwise it's blocked. One crucial requirement for using nonces is that they have to be fresh on every page load. They should be generated from cryptographically secure random source and should never be reused. Otherwise, the attacker can predict the nonce. And please remember that no of these measures can guarantee that you are 100% XSS secure. You should strive to implement as many preventive measures as you can. That was the end of this video. Please let me know what you think about it.